this lesson we're going to be taking a look at creating uh, primitives. So we're going to do the polygon primitives that we see here. We have uh, sphere, cube, the cube is hidden inside, oh, there we go, there's the cube, um, cylinder, and so forth. So we're going to look at some of the different attributes that might be available inside of each one of the primitives and how to manipulate them and then also we're going to take a look at uh, positioning them in the scene. So let's get this a little bit bigger so that it's easier for you guys to see. Let me stretch this out and the first thing we want to do is import maya.cmds as mc. Now we want to find out what the command is that we want to run. So for example, if we wanted to create a sphere, we have the polysphere command. And then it has attributes here that we can run for it. So Let's start off with just creating the um, MC dot polysphere. Something that you're going to want to be careful with is the casing. So in here, if we put polysphere with a lower case, it doesn't work. Whereas if we put it with an uppercase, it will work. So if we put it with no attributes, we should get just the default settings, which is OK but we can start adding flags in here so we can do or attributes so we have for example name we can create the name attribute and then in quotes here we can give it a name so that, let's say this is called my sphere so now when we run this we should see that the sphere is now named my sphere there's a lot of different flags and there's a typically both a long form and a short form. So for example, with the name, so if we delete this, we can do N instead and it will run that. A lot of the commands from one to another will um, cross over. So with the polycube, I know, or with the cube, I know that it is called polycube. C-U-B-E, and if we just change this to my cube, we should see that it names it my cube. So the um, N and the name is pretty standard overall. It's going to give you the name for the object you're creating. So let's look at the command reference really quick. Uh, help, and we'll go to the Python command reference and look at, let's look at the polycube. So as we search, you can see that it, it narrows down the selection. When we had poly, there's a lot more. Poly C, U, then we can see that there's even less. As we go through, it filters out until we get polycube. Um, I'm going to click on that, and it's going to give us the information here. So. We haven't talked about types of parameters here. It's talking about linear and Boolean and things like that. We'll go over that in a little bit later, exactly what they are. But I just want to give you an idea of looking at here. So we had the name that we were working with here. So it sets the name of newly created node if it contains a namespace path. And the new node will be created under the specific namespace. If the namespace does not exist, it will be created. So it gives us um, a lot of information on how this name works. But basically, it's a name. Um, it's giving us the string data type. So when we look down here it's inside of quotes so that means that it's reading it as a um, as a string 
the string is just a collection of characters. They could be um, letters the way they are, they can also be numbers, but it is basically something that would fill in like text typically, um, or the name of an object and things like that. They're, that's the way the strings work. Um, okay, let's look over here. And then we have a lot of other things that we can control. Some very common ones are the height and the depth, and probably towards the bottom we have the width. So we can type out the whole word, height, depth, and width, or we can use the shorthand so that way it's a lot easier for us with the W, D, and H. So if we want to add more than one attribute, we just have to separate it with a comma and then say width equals one, comma, height equals two, comma, depth equals three. Let me just scale this down a little bit so that we can see it all in one screen right here. Um, and that I did that again by holding down the control um, button on the keyboard and then middle mouse button scrolling. So I have the cube with uh, new dimensions there. So let's get rid of this old cube and we will run this and we can see that we have the cube that is created with different values for the height, uh, depth and width. So when we look at it over here inside of the channel box, you'll see that the translate, rotate, and scale are all the same, so it's not going to affect it. This is just the starting point when it's created. What it is created is the inputs here for the width, height, and depth. Um, we can also do, do subdivisions and things like that, so if we were to look at the command reference, you'll see that we have subdivisions in the x-axis, uh, subdivisions along the width, subdivisions along the height, subdivisions along the um, depth, uh, the x-axis, which we said, the y-axis, and the z-axis. So um, we can do it by either way. So we have all those, and there's a lot of attributes, and to go one by one uh, might take a while, but um, for everything, but you get the general idea, like what you uh, would need to do in order to find a specific attribute that you have in here. And in the bottom, Maya does give you some example code that you can uh, copy and put into the um, script editor inside of Maya and run it if you needed to. Now, let's take a look at creating another piece of geometry. So I'm going to Let's add the code that we had before. We're going to do mc.polysphere and give it a name and it is going to equal to my sphere. And I'll run that and then we can see that we have the sphere here in the scene. Oops, I pushed spacebar so it erased everything. All you got to do is if you lose everything in here, just click inside of the script editor and do control Z and it should bring everything back. Okay, so I have a poly sphere and then we have a uh, poly cube and we need to make sure that they are not on top of each other, that we separate them a set number of units. So what we can do is um, look at a couple of ways that we would do it here inside of the scene. So if I were to take this and move it, you can see that it uses the move command. We could take a look at the move command and see what it does. Move. And we have that. And it gives us the flags and different um, parameters and things that you can use. Um, and that's kind of like the one way that you can do it. Also, my preferred way is to actually give it a specific coordinate that we're going to be moving it to. So if I change the value here inside of the translate x, for example, you'll see that the command that it gives is not move anymore, it is set adder. 
because we are setting an attribute here inside of the channel box. So that's what I am going to do. Let's look at the set adder command. Set adder. And it's without the E before the R with a capital A. And it gives us examples and the flags that you can use and the examples down here. So basically what we need to do is do um, MC dot set adder and then the parentheses we have to give it the object name a dot and then the attribute that we actually want to change. So let's take a look at doing that. We named the cube so let's do MC dot set adder then we know that it is my cube dot uh, translate x and then close the parentheses so we know that that is the attribute that we want to change and I, I'm using a capital X because you'll see that when we set it here it's translate all lowercase with a capital X so that is important because the casing does matter and then we are going to do let's make it equal to 5 Oops, let's get rid of all the old stuff that we had in the scene there we go so something Okay, so we can um, add more shapes and keep on moving them across like that. Um, and if we had another shape, we would do um, translate instead of x. Uh, I mean, it will still be x, but instead of 5, it, we would set it to 10. And then it would be moved another 5 units over. So let's do one more to take a look at how everything will come together with one more set. So I'm just going let's to copy this one and instead of polysphere, let's do torus. There we go. So we can create a torus. And we can do my torus. Let's clear the scene here. Oops, there we go. And then we can see that we get the torus in the scene. So let's copy this line here. We'll paste it right below the last one and then we can say my torus dot translate x is at 5 so there we go we have the torus created and positioned here at um, unit 10 so that's how it works. Another thing that you can play around with is that the um, translate x, you don't have to write the whole thing down. You can do um, tx lowercase. And if you do that, it will still work. So that's kind of the shorthand for translate x. You can just write tx and it will be much faster for you to type out and make sure that it um, goes through with the code and doesn't give you any errors. Um, so with the translates, they are all TX, TY, TZ. Then rotate is RX, RY, and RZ. And then scale is SX, SY, and SZ. That will give us the opportunity to write in everything that we need for the basic attributes that we would be manipulating with the set adder. So in the next lesson, we're going to be taking a look at 
um, variables and also data types so that way we can start making this a little bit more robust and be able to create multiple of an object and space them out automatically without having to um, say specifically oh we need it at 10 we need it at 5 units and it will automatically calculate it based off of some predetermined attributes that we set for it. Alright, we'll see you guys in the next lesson. Bye!